Hi, my name is Jenny and you're watching Dante Boxing Nation. Hey Virgil, I want to ask you real quick, man, and Brian, if I could get you guys' opinion, what you guys think about um, Golovkin uh, challenging uh, Kel Brook? Uh, you know, uh, first of all, like I said it earlier, I commend Kel Brook stepping up and you know, taking the fight. I mean, it just seems like the direction the game is going in right now, whether it be money or you just never know. Uh -huh. um, but it's on paper and it's nothing um, we can do but look forward to it. You know, but I do commend Kel Brook for stepping up and, and taking the fight. You know, can't can't take that from him. Yeah. Brian, is, is uh, Golovkin in a lose-lose uh, situation to you because a lot of people perceive this as like another Canelo Khan type of fight? What do you think, Brian? No, I mean, you know, I think from a Golovkin standpoint, I think he wanted Eubanks Jr. Yeah. And a lot of these guys say they want to fight him until you put that contract in front of them, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's a lot of excuses that go on. And so, you know, I kind of like what Virgil said, I, I commend Kel Brook saying, hey, look, I can fight this guy. I'm a bigger welterweight. Uh, going up wouldn't be as hard for me. And for Golovkin, it's like, well, who can I fight? I would love to fight uh, Daniel Jacobs and things that those fighters of that ilk, but, you know, I think the promotional issues sometimes permit, prevent those kind of matchups from happening. Uh -huh. So he's trying to get the, the biggest and the best he can out there. And, hey, Kel Brook is, is a world champion. He feels like, hey, look, I've, I've been walking around at a heavier weight. It shouldn't be that hard for me to be 160. And doesn't want to add a catch weight. Yeah, Give him yeah, that. He yeah. didn't want he didn't want a catch weight. So yeah. and I think Golovkin said, look, I'm gonna fight who's out there. Yeah. And, and like I said, BJ Saunders as well. BJ Saunders, a lot of guys he, talk he a lot of want, stuff yeah, until they put, you put that contract in front of them and then it's like, well, um, Yeah, yeah. So yeah. hey, he's gonna fight who's ever gonna put his name on that contract. Absolutely, absolutely. So so you believe there is a possibility he could get acclimated to the weight to where he uh Kel can actually come in there and be a, a natural middleweight or, or close to a natural middleweight. Well, you know, I'll defer to Virgil on that because that's right up his wheelhouse. You know, I, I do think that, you know, Kel Brook feels like he's a bigger puncher at welterweight and that his power would translate. You know, I think Virgil could probably talk to that more because, you know, he dealt with Amir and, um, yeah, and, yeah. and what Amir had to go through. But I, we're going to find out. We're, gonna we're find definitely going to find And, you know, I think a lot of times that we saw in the old days, you know, guys... You know, whether it was Hagler, whether it was Ray Leonard, those guys who would move up. And listen, one of my favorite fighters, Sugar Ray Robinson, I mean, hey, he was a world champion at welterweight, middleweight, even tried to almost won it at light heavyweight. Uh-huh, yeah, uh, yeah. So it worked back in the day. Uh-huh. Well, I guess we're going to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to definitely find out. So, like I just asked Brian, do you believe Kell Brook? He keeps saying he walked around at 178. And Golovkin just recently said they're the same size. You, do you buy that? Do you believe that, or or what? I mean, we've seen in the history Manny Pacquiao beat De La Hoya, Shane Mosley jumped up, he beat Mo, uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Is it possible he could be accl acclimated to the weight? Well, first and foremost, they they won with skill. You know, Mayweather fighting De La Hoya, Mayweather fighting Cotto, uh, Pacquiao coming up to fight. Uh, De La Hoya, but the difference is De La Hoya had to come down to a lower weight than he ever had to. Be Good fighting. point. Excellent I point. I think they're draining. Yeah. You talk about uh, back in the day with Robinson and everybody, then there was a same day weigh in also, so it wasn't an advantage for the guy to go put on 10, 15 pounds for the next day. That They weighed that morning and fought that night. So, um, you know, whatever weight he's best at, so far we've seen him best at welterweight. We haven't even seen him fight 54. But it does take a little bit of your stamina away because you're carrying extra weight than you're used to carrying. You know, everybody has a fighting weight and you're carrying extra weight. So you definitely need an IQ that goes along with it. If you notice Mayweather, he never gained weight to fight anybody. Stayed the same weight, the best fighting weight for him. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think Brooke might be better fighting 52 or 53 uh, than trying to match the weight because even if you weigh the 
the same, you still won't have the right structure. Uh -huh. you know, so you should stay at the weight that you're the best at. Yeah. You know, so time will tell, but history says unless you have that skill uh -huh. and that IQ, that's going to be a tough task. And you just said it. You said stay at the weight you're best at. Yeah. That's what Gennady Golovkin is doing right now. That's what he's doing right I mean, now. do you believe eventually, if he can't unify the divisions, Danny Jacobs, Billy Joe Saunders, if he can't unify, should he move up the way Andre Ward moved up? Well, you know what? Fighters are not scared to fight anybody, right? And, and it's like I said, when you when you're up against fighters are not stupid, okay? They they see when you got the hype behind you, they see when you're the darling. So they're looking on the outside, looking in and saying, well, if it's all of this and you want him to unify so bad, then you're gonna have to compensate me. Billy Joe Sanders is not scared of Golovkin, Danny Jacobs is not scared of Golovkin, and Eubanks is not scared of him. It's what they feel the fight is worth. So you can't ask me to um, throw away my belt. I mean, how, how is it gonna be played out? We're two champions. So you gonna get more money than me? And that's what they're looking at, it's like, you gonna get five and I'm gonna get three? But you got the machine behind you, you got the promotion behind you, you got the hype behind you, and fighters are not stupid. They're looking at that, so let's, let's get equal on those terms. So it's parity at the table. You know, when it's parity at the table, we can fight. Fighters are not scared of anybody, contrary to what people uh, might think. You know? but, um, if you make a statement like you bank, or you make a statement like Canelo, then you know people expect you to follow through. Yeah. But Eubank's situation is different from Canelo's. Canelo would have been the cash cow here, so he doesn't have yeah. an excuse, you know, other than uh, he just didn't want to fight. So if you're gonna look at somebody who didn't want to fight, you have to look at uh, Canelo Alvarez. Mm -hmm. You can't say that about Sanders or Eubank or Danny Jacobs, right? So they want to have that same notoriety, that same parity at the table, then that fight becomes worthwhile. And if this guy can get a pass with no problems, uh, after he said he was going to fight him, then don't label me as being scared and running from him. Because we could flip-flop it, like you said, he can move up and wait, okay? So they've turned down fights, just like opponents turn down fights against them. So that, that's how it is. This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Thank you.